Hello, this is Dave Kosky, and I have a, I would call it a stellation generator. Um, it can generate all 59 stellations of the icosahedron. And it uh, just really needs to be demonstrated. There's our... I guess our diagram that we can work with. So we all know that one of the stellations is actually the icosahedron. So I'm going to highlight that triangle. And what I'll do is I'll invert the selection so everything else is highlighted. And then I will hide everything else. I just have the triangle and I'll select it. And then there's the um, Icosahedral symmetry toggle switch, and there's our icosahedron. And we can just back out of this and generate some other ones. Of course, I messed around with the location, that's okay. I'm just trying to get it nice and flush, it's really not necessary. And then select everything. Now, one of my favorites, and I have to apologize to the list that when I first came onto the list, the first thing I did is I came up guns a blazing trying to say that the great icosahedron should be replaced by what I've come to know it as the excavated dodecahedron or the squashed dodecahedron. And, uh, one, one of my collaborators has been calling it the icosahedral socket. Anyway, that takes a little more attention. You have to highlight the proper triangles. And I'm sure those of you that are aware of how this process works, it's uh, very evident. And some of you have even written stuff probably for Wikipedia and things like that. Okay, so now I'll just hide everything I don't need. Now I just have those three triangles. Select icosahedral symmetry. There's our squashed dodecahedron. There's a reason why I'm a big uh, proponent of this form. Because with the two Kepler uh, stellations, the great and small, dodecahedron and also the great dodecahedron and not using the great icosahedron but this form instead there's a building process where one can make essentially from icosahedron through the stellations to a pentagonal dodecahedron to the stellations back to an icosahedron and I do and I use what I call PQR modules and I've dubbed them peculiar E modules that's just kind of a Buckminster Fuller Synergetics uh, nomenclature with the E module, but nonetheless, the units are scaled by phi and they actually build the entire sequence. And it's completely accountable in whole number um, coefficients with uh, the scalings by phi, the volumetric uh, changes to the third power. And that, in a nutshell, is why I promote this form and I know better than to go against anything like that again. I was just being, um, I guess, strident in my desire for some recognition of the socket or squash dodecahedron. So there's, you know, the, all kinds of ways. I mean, many of you know how this works, so I'll just do a couple quick demonstrations and probably just shut up. But probably could have some music going, but all right. And, hide. and here will be our, I guess this is the final stellation. I'm not real familiar. There seems to be more than one order of how this goes. I'm also not, a, I'm not very keen on the stellations that seem um, essentially disconnected. You know, they're kind of floating in space. I find that a little, uh, but there's rules. I understand that. But um, anyway, that's your uh, 
still of the final installation. I just back out of that and probably should shouldn't mess around too much with the orientation, but it doesn't really matter. Um I guess one of the ones that is kind of fun is the five uh intersecting tetrahedra. And I kinda like to Highlight. Well, I missed that, didn't I? Let me get out of there. Oops, went too fast. Okay, let me start over. Click, click. I just find it kind of interesting how there's a um, I think I did that right. No, I missed this one here. So, you know, there's kind of an interesting um, part that's uh, in the center that um, I uh, kind of like to do volume in my in, in my methodology. So, something like that little hole in the middle of that triangle to me is very curious, but that's okay. Do the icosahedral symmetry, and there is the five tetrahedra. And you can change the color if you want. Let's go to color selection. I don't know. I can't like. Let's use whatever color. This is kind of pretty. And if you want to get fancy, you can do other things. You see, so all these little panels are kind of in here, as you can see. It's pretty fun, and you can you can actually. You know, kind of hide them and kind of try to look inside there and see what's going on. Okay, we'll get out of there. And uh, I think I'm going to conclude this pretty quickly here. We'll conclude with the shape that I disrespected. And I think we can get away with making it. Uh, maybe not. I might be kidding myself here. Forget so inverse selection, and this is your great icosahedron. I think that's right. And with that, I want to thank everyone for watching. And uh, why don't I dedicate this to a great geometer? Oops, missed the color. A great geometer, Magnus Winninger whom I've had the good fortune to meet a couple times because I live here in Minneapolis and he's up in St. Cloud, St. John's. And uh, I know how, how much he's worked with these. I'm sure he's very familiar. And uh, all right, I'm done. Thank you all.